Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Growing in Grace podcast. Hello. How are you? I'm Arnold Horshack. Have I, have, I, have I done that recently? It seems like I've done that recently on the podcast. Maybe I don't not. know. You've been wa- you've been watching those reruns, haven't you? I have. I've been, I've been watching Welcome Back, Cotter. And, and I get a good laugh out of that. It's uh, funny because I would I would have been younger. I mean, when it aired originally, Welcome Back, Cotter, in the late seventies, I would have been actually. I I was I was going to say I would, I would have been too young to really have watched it, but I would have actually been. That's when I went was living in England and they didn't have it over there. So when I came back to the States in 1981, I would have seen it in syndication and I loved it back then. And then the only thing about it is Gabe Cotter at the, at the beginning and end of every show, he's telling his wife a joke and they mm-hmm. are some of the stupid <laughs> jokes. I know. And I'm like, that's not even really funny. I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's, funny it's not off color or anything like that but i'm like and then they leave him they leave uh after he says the joke then he's smiling and instead of a still shot they just leave him the the camera on him as he's smiling at his own joke and it's it's just kind of it's kind of wacky i guess but the show (laughs) itself i do remember that the show itself is funny and you got vinnie barberino um john travolta playing that part and i'm up to the season uh where um it was it would have been late seventies, late seventy seven, early seventy eight, where he would have just got done filming Saturday night, Saturday Night Fever, and so he missed a couple episodes. And I'm and I'm thinking, I wonder if back then, if everybody knew why he missed a couple of episodes. And then they ended up introducing a new character. I think eventually he was all he was written off the show, but that's because Grease came out and mm-hmm. everything like that. Mm-hmm. So. Those were big movies back yeah. at the time. That was a, a, lot of, a lot of music came from them, too, that were that ended up on the radio. Big time. And speaking of Olivia Newton-John, like you mentioned last week. Exactly. The whole thing back yep. then. All right. So you mentioned at the end of the last program that you had some sort of a story you wanted to share, right, if I yeah. recall. Yeah. Well, I had, I had watched this video just speaking of Jesus revealing himself to people and so i do a very poor job of describing what i have seen <laughs> watching videos but i'll i'll do what i can do but basically it was a video of a jewish guy talking to another jewish person this is in, in modern times so this would have been recent I, I don't know if they were on a university campus or whatever but they were outside and he was telling him the, the christian the the jewish guy had come to know jesus and he was telling another jew who didn't know jesus uh, about his experience and basically the essence of it was that uh, he had been just kind of lost in life you know no purpose and didn't know what he was doing and where he was going and all this stuff and he was looking for not, not even necessarily for god but for for peace and so he would he tried various things like buddhism and hinduism and what he called a mixture of different religions he made up his own religion and then eventually, uh, he said, Jesus revealed himself to him. And it wasn't, re- you know, it, it, that wasn't really what he was seeking. It wasn't what he was looking for, but that's what he got. That's what he found. That's what well, Jesus kind of revealed himself to him. And as time went on, he eventually began looking in the scriptures he would look in the old what we know is the old testament scriptures the old covenant scriptures and he found the messiah there so as a jewish person he would see jesus the messiah there and then he said it took him a while but then eventually he began reading i think he said he was a little scared to get into the new testament scriptures if i remember right but he began reading those and it made even more sense to him Um, But the point of all this is that it wasn't like we were talking about how Jesus asked Peter, asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of God. 
And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I believe it was very similar or the same with this guy. It was not flesh and blood that had revealed Christ to him, but Christ himself revealed himself to him. And then it was after that, that he got into the scriptures and he began to get knowledge about what was already true of him, about what the, this faith that he had come to have in this in the living God who had revealed himself to him and then real real quickly too I th- might have shared this on the podcast before I'm not sure but I had a friend that, that actually the friend who had a lot to do with me coming to know Jesus but he was into kind of a lifestyle of drugs and really going nowhere in life and one day he was traveling up a highway and there was a car on the side of the road somebody had I don't know it was a flat tire or had engine needs or whatever he was kind of a me- mechanically minded but he found himself pulling over and helping this person and he's saying to himself what am I doing I don't I don't do this <laughs> I don't pull over and help people uh, but anyway so he helped the person and then was on his way and then as time went on just things like that kept happening and then um, he ended up with some friends that I now know Um, that he had introduced me to, but he didn't know them at the time. They were telling him about Jesus, and he realized that all these things that were going on inside him and with his life, it was Jesus. And so he wasn't pursuing God. He wasn't reading the Bible. He wasn't reading the scriptures. And, but through all this, Christ revealed himself to him, to him. That's, that's the whole point of this. And uh, as we say all this, obviously we're not Um, coming against the scriptures, but I I think a lot of people say that you have to have this exact um, process, you know, like the Romans road that people say, or you have to explain perfectly the gospel to people. You have to explain it perfectly so that they will understand it and they will believe in Jesus. And, And that's good. There's nothing wrong with sharing the truth of the gospel with people. But ultimately, what it is about is Christ himself revealing himself to the, to the hearts of people. And uh, whether you have the scriptures in front of you or not. So that's kind of where <clears throat> some of the things we've been thinking about and talking about lately. Yeah, you know, um, there are many different ways to share the gospel. There's, there's no one set way to do it. Like you said, Romans Road was a method that somebody in recent times, uh, years ago, came up with as, as a method. Uh, you can talk pros and cons about that. We won't get into right. that right now. But I, I think, you know, when it comes to this revelation, you know, l- last week we, we talked about that the Mount of Transfiguration, as it is sometimes referred to, where Jesus uh, took three of his disciples up and was s- sort of supernaturally transfigured from his human state. And Moses shows up and, you know, Elijah <laughs> And then a voice from heaven is heard. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Um, so there's that kind of a revelation, <laughs> which mm-hmm. I've never had one of those. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing quite like that. But I, I think there are many times when God is, God the Spirit, working in and through us, right? Uh, I, I think there's sometimes revelation and teaching and leading and different things going on from the Spirit to us that we don't always recognize as coming from the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Things are being revealed. In, in some cases, we, we may have some aha moments like, oh, I understand this now. And and we sort of attribute it to, and I'm, I'm not saying that this isn't involved, but uh, we sort of attribute it to um, just uh, having some sort of knowledge come to life um, mentally, intellectually, philosophically. You know, you, you've got people who are Bible teachers who are sometimes called doctor. You know, maybe they have a, a doctorate of uh, philosophy. Um, and that's fine, but that's not the same thing as, as revelation of the Spirit. You know, it's good to grow in our knowledge of, of the truth, to, to grow in, in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, but many of these things, like what we're talking about when it comes to just Jesus, they're spiritually discerned. They're, they're not intellectually 
understood, even though our understanding ha- has uh, something to do with it, it's, it, but it comes from a different source when it comes to the truth of the gospel. And, and sometimes you may be someone who recognizes in, in certain situations, for whatever reason, you recognize that this was something God is showing you. This was something that came from a, a source that wasn't just, you know, from another person uh, or even just from reading the, the Bible. Having Bible knowledge is great. It's not the same thing as, as knowing the truth, like we were talking about with God's love a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I just want to throw this out there. We're just having a conversation here, right? You know, I just want to encourage uh, people who are listening, Joel, that even though you may not always recognize it as the Spirit of God, I, I think the Spirit of God is constantly feeding things to us that we may or may not always recognize as coming from Him. Yeah, I, I believe I think that's true, and <clears throat> indeed, you know, having the the doctorate or the like. Well, my my mom um, in her later years, she became an ordained minister and she got her doctorate. Um. And she was known, I'm trying to think of the order, it was the Reverend Dr. Libby Brzezinski or, or Dr. Re- I think it was Reverend, Reverend Dr. Libby Brzezinski. Anyway, but she would have been the first to tell you that those titles don't mean anything. Uh, it, it's, it's just she got a doctorate and she got a ministry license and, and all that. But um, that was more to do official things in, in their denomination. But she would have been the first to tell you that it's it's a it's about knowing Christ. It's not about having all of this knowledge. Uh, it's you know her um, big thing was you know loving loving people in in action. Um, she really demonstrated that, and that's what she really wanted to do with with her life. That's what she did with her life. But um, so knowledge in itself is not a bad thing. But like you're saying, Christ Himself, uh, it's knowing Christ Himself and 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 being known by him you know paul said you know not just about knowing him but you know being known by him and you know paul himself he was going against against the grain i mean he was persecuting believers and god revealed himself to paul uh, on the road to damascus you you know the story but you know the thing where, where he was um going against the grain persecuting the church and and god revealed himself to him and then obviously we have all of what you know, Paul shared what Jesus revealed to him uh, throughout his epistles and, and things like that. But you can, I was one of those people that I had a knowledge about Christ and I was waiting. This is before I really began, you know, this walk with him. I was waiting for one of those like transfiguration type of moments. I was thinking, uh, because, because I think my, I was thinking I had to change. I, th- I was thinking it had to be about my behavior. My be- behavior had to change before I could ever have any kind of a relationship with God. And so I was waiting for God to just do this big thing, this big overwhelming thing. And then I would truly believe, and then I would truly change. And then I could truly be a Christian, but it didn't happen that way. And that's, that's good because what has happened over the years is what kind of what you're talking about these these revelations from him and at the time again during each time i may not have even realized that it was a revelation from him i may i may not have known it sometimes i'm like yeah i knew that that was god revealing himself to me but the point is that like i was sharing last time is that even even when i was being taught wrong things god was revealing things to me in the midst of all that and it's it's a spirit thing. It's a like I guess the newsboy song. It's a spirit thing. It's <laughs> what the, the Holy Spirit does in in and through us. And, and he he teaches us. You know he he's the one that guides us into all truth. And and truth isn't just a knowledge. It, it's not really talking about a knowledge and and, and an understanding of facts, but it's Jesus Christ. It's knowing Him, the way, the truth, and the life. And it's uh. <laughs> It's definitely something that um, you know. People ask us, "How can I understand this?" or "How can how can I know what the Bible says about this or that?" And you know, there's credence to that. You want to kind of you know, there's some things you don't understand, but just look to the Holy Spirit. Let Him reveal what He wants to reveal to you. You may not ever understand this passage that you're struggling with or that passage, 
but it's, that's okay because it's about Christ himself uh, revealing himself to you. Well, to wrap up uh, this one, um, l listen, you, you may not have the Transfiguration experience or the Damascus Road experience, um, but you can still have your experiences with, with God. Uh, and it's just a matter, you know, sometimes, pe sometimes people just feel like they, they are not connected to God the way that they perceive that others are. Um, you know, just just ask God to, to help show you some things. How he'll do that, I don't know. But it's just a matter of, of choosing to believe, you know, and you can say it out loud. Affirm it to yourself. I, I believe in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that you live in me. I mean, there's nothing wrong with affirming that, making that confession, um, agreeing with what uh, the scriptures say about you as a as a believer in Christ. You know, I was I was looking at, at Matthew um, 28, and this is after Jesus rose shortly before he ascended. He's got the 11 disciples there with him on a mountain. Uh, they saw him. They worshiped him. But one of the most one, three words that I, I'm, I'm confounded by here, Joel, um, Matthew 28, 17, when they saw him, they worshiped him. But again, this is after the resurrection, but some doubted. <laughs> <laughs> the 11 disciples, some doubt it. What were they doubting? Why were they doubting? We, we can only speculate. Maybe they were so familiar with his humanity or they, they were focused on the physical or maybe there was fear involved. They didn't understand his mission. I, I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, t time goes on from, from there. We, we, we are all growing in our understanding. But I think our encouragement to you is it's, it's by God's spirit that this happens. And uh, it will take you to places of peace and rest that you can only dream about. But I like what you said with, with your mom and that. It's, it's about knowing Christ, as the Apostle Paul said. It's about knowing Him and the power of His resurrection. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.